All right, you guys, so real quick, I want to show you in this video how to find a critical value of a t interval. So there are most of the problems we can use the table in the back of the book. All right, so I just want to point out to you that if we go to chapter contents in my stat lab and then we go to appendices, that we can pull up table five, and that's the t distribution table. So most of the problems that we use, right, I've shown you guys this in class, I prefer to use the t-table to find the critical values uh, for either a confidence interval or even a hypothesis test. Right? Now, there are some of the homework problems where the degrees of freedom isn't listed in the t-table, and it's really the main purpose of this video. I want to um, show you how to look those up. All right, so if you look at this t-table, right, and the scrolling is going real quick there, I apologize, right? Um, if you look at the degrees of freedom, uh, we go all the way up to, I think it's, what is it, 35, goes up to 40. So if I have a sample size of 41, then I subtract one and I get 40 degrees of freedom. And so any, any sample size 41 or smaller, I can find the degrees of freedom very easily. But then it starts to jump by units of five. So for example, let's suppose my sample size was 45. What I need is 44 degrees of freedom and I don't see that on this table. So if I have something like a sample size of 45, which is 44 degrees of freedom, how would I find that value? And that's what I want to show you here uh, is using StatCrunch. Now again, I just want to remind you real quick while I have this table open, right, if we look at the table, if we're doing a confidence interval, remember that a confidence interval is really, you know, the data between two critical values, right? Um, if we're doing a hypothesis test, we're looking at either one tail or two tails. So, so keep that in mind uh, when we're doing uh, stat crunch, right, we need to know if we're doing a confidence interval, it's technically two tails, right, it's between the two values, and if we're doing a hypothesis test, you know, we're looking at left or right tail. So let me bring up stat crunch real quick, and what we'll do in this case, we'll go to stat, and then we will go to uh, calculator, and then what we're going to do in this case is use the T calculator. All right, so I'm going to bring up the T calculator, and it's going to give me this window here, and it's going to allow me to type in the degrees of freedom and then find, you know, the, the probability, right, um, that I'm looking for. So, for example, suppose I, I'm doing a confidence interval, and I'm doing a 95% confidence interval. So a confidence interval is always the between feature, and what I'm going to do in this case is let's suppose my degrees of freedom was uh, 44, like we talked about in that prior uh, example looking at the table, right? So I have a sample size of 45, I have 44 degrees of freedom, and I want, let's say I want 95% confidence. So I'm going to type 0.95 over here in the probability, and then when I click compute, it's going to give me those critical values where 95% of the data lies between uh, for a sample size of 45. So we have 44 degrees of freedom. So um, if I'm doing a confidence interval, I'm going to always want to make sure I click on the between button, and then I'm going to type in the confidence to the right. That's my probability, right? It's the area under the curve, and then the, the, uh, the stat calculator will compute these two critical values for me. Now, if I'm doing a hypothesis test, then I'm going to want to click on standard. So if the hypothesis test is one tail, I'm going to click on the standard button. So let's say, you know, again, I have a sample size of 45, so I have 44 degrees of freedom. Them. And let's say I'm doing a right tail, so I'm going to choose to the right. And let's say my alpha is, you know, 0.05. So if my alpha is 0.05, I'm like, excuse me, my level of significance is 5% willingness to accept a, an error, and I have uh, degrees of freedom of 44, right? And then I just choose the greater than, I put the alpha in the right tail, and I click compute, and it gives me that critical value. So here's my critical value so that I have 5% in the right tail. Right? Or, or obviously if I'm doing the left tail and I choose left tail um, and let's say I want 5% uh, in the left tail. So I would type 0.05, you know, again have my degrees of freedom here, choose the left tail and click compute. All right, so um, as I've discussed in class, I think the quickest way to find critical values is to use the table. But if the uh, Degrees of freedom isn't in the table, um, then this would really be the best approach to use.